Welcome back to the Q&A session with our CEO. We have about uh, 20, 30 minutes planned for the Q&A session. You can ask questions using uh, the chat function. Please be so kind and write your question in English. In uh, order to ensure that as many as of you as possible can ask questions, every participant can ask only one question. Please give your name and the media outlet that you work for. I will group the questions thematically as far as possible so that we can deal with as many topics as possible, one after the other. So let's begin with your questions. Um, maybe Corona first. Uh, Julian Walkers from the Pabla magazine from the United Arab Emirates wants to know what impact will the coronavirus have on our operations, on your operations, and how is Wintersail DEA looking to operate in another period of low, low oil prices? Mario. Yeah, thank you, Julian, for the question. Uh, let me start with uh, Corona. As Michael said, Corona first. Um, currently, our production is running stable on a global basis. We have no impacts on uh, production uh, yet. Um, in terms of uh, office activities, of course, we are doing what everybody is doing around the globe. So in many countries, uh, like for example in Germany, in Norway, in the Netherlands, uh, but also in Argentina or Abu Dhabi, we have sent people to home office. I think um, this is uh, very important that we now make sure that we cut the infection chain and that we try to flatten the infection curve as much as possible in order to make the health system uh, being able to cater with the situation. So we are monitoring the situation, of course, very closely. We have a crisis team in place that is uh, meeting on a daily basis and uh, we'll decide from day to day um, if further actions are needed. Um, coming to your second question around the uh, operations in a period of low oil prices, um, let me say that Winter Saldea is very well positioned um, with its low cost portfolio, with its exposure to stable cash flows from the midstream business to deal with the situation of low oil prices. Uh, nevertheless, I think it is important that on top of that uh, we take decisive measures and we have done so. For example, uh, we have lowered our development carpex to a range of 1.2 to 1.5 billion euros this year, 20% less than our original plans for this year. We are also reducing our exploration budget to uh, something between 150 and 250 million euros compared to 340 million euros that we had in 2019. So uh, obviously we are also taking these decisive measures to be even better positioned. And if we do so, I think um, we will successfully navigate our way through this crisis and we will come out at the other end leaner and stronger than before. Yeah, thanks Mario. Uh, we are getting a lot of questions from more or less all over the world with uh, the questions how um, our production is affected locally. Uh, Mr. Ahmed from Al Sharouk newspaper from Egypt asks um, how is our production affected in Egypt? Ola Mürset from Stavanger Affenblatt from Norway wants to know um, about uh, the progress, what does it mean for our progress of our projects on the um, NCS, on the continental shelf, and uh, how does the low oil price affect our projects there. Uh, from Brazil, Rodrigo Polito um, from Valor Economico wants to know if we are going to continue with our exploration activities in Brill or if the coronavirus um, affects our plans there. And last but not least, Irna Kesik from Öl und Gas Vertical from Russia wants to know if the coronavirus affects the implementation of Nord Stream 2. Yeah, quite a number of questions. I try to go through the different uh, regions and countries. Um, talking about Egypt, um, uh, here in terms of production, it is valid what I said before. Production is running very stable, uh, no issues so far, and our team um, as far as we are talking about office personnel, is working from home office, um, and just like I mentioned it um, before. Um, in terms of Norway, um, our projects, um, in particular those that are operated by us, like Dvalin and Nova, are so far running according to schedule. Um, 
we have to see if there's any impact from, for example, force majeure declarations of some of our service companies in the future, but it's too early to tell. So far, uh, we don't see an impact on our, on our projects. Um, all our projects are projects that are stable also in low oil price um, scenarios and gas price scenarios, so we don't see an impact of the current price environment on these uh, projects. Uh, when it comes to Brazil, Brazil, as you all know, is an important pillar of our growth strategy. Um, so uh, we are continuing with the activities that we have there. We just acquired 3D seismic in Brazil. We are in the process of analyzing uh, and working this 3D seismic, and we are continuing to um, perform our exploration activity, which is not yet drilling wells, but rather getting prepared for the first well to be drilled um, according to plan. Also in Brazil, by the way, the team is working from home. Um, Nord Stream 2, actually, um, uh, I would refer this question to the project company. Um, I have no information to what extent um, the project is um, affected by the coronavirus. One additional question from uh, Argentina. Um, Hernan Dobri uh, would like to know if we are going to continue with our plans to begin the development of Aguera Federal in October. With regard to Argentina and our um, two operated shale projects there, uh, we are getting prepared for um, the new phase of development in Aguada Federal and Banduria Norte, uh, and so far everything remains on track. We have got several questions with regard to the oil price as well, so maybe a different topic. Uh, Ola Mürset from Stavanger Affenblatt wants to know what is our expectation for the oil price in the short term. And Vera Eckert from Reuters asks, what is the forecast for the expected gas and oil prices this year? Well, um, the uh, very honest answer to both questions is um, I have no idea, um, and we have no idea. I think these times are so volatile um, and uh, so dynamically changing that any forecast uh, is outdated the moment you give it. So we do what we can do as a company. We focus on keeping our portfolio very cost effective and efficient. Um, we keep our production stable, prepare our projects to come on stream next year. Um, this is what we can do and this will keep us a successful company. And what oil price would be critical for your company? Ask Vasily Milkin from Rembler News Russia. And in your opinion, what measures should be taken to increase the price and stabilize the oil market, Mario? Well, this year, in terms of uh, free cash flows, uh, we would need uh, an oil price of roughly 35 to 40 US dollars per barrel uh, at a gas price of four dollars per um, MCF in order to be free cash flow break even, meaning to be able to finance out of our operational cash flows the um, development CAPEX and exploration budget that I mentioned um, before. Uh, next year, these uh, levels will be significantly lower because of the projects that come on stream, uh, like Dwalin, like Nova, like Njord, like Raven, like Archimor 4.5. Um, so I think um, that that clearly demonstrates our resilient portfolio. Um, whether or not action can be taken in order to um, stabilize the oil price, I, I have no idea. Um, I think we all have witnessed that the um, OPEC plus talks uh, failed and apparently we are now more in the middle of a price war between Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia and potentially other market participants. A question from Olaf Ridder, Dow Jones. He would like to know um, if our production costs, as we announced, of $4.30 per barrel are cash costs. That are the uh, full production costs um, that we are uh, having. And Alex Forbes from Gas Matters would like to know if uh, you could think of specific measures that uh, should um, natural gas business uh, taking to respond to the virus outbreak and the oil price crash? 
Well, I think it's the measures that um, I have uh, mentioned already before. Um, uh, be even more strict in terms of uh, spending development, CAPEX, and uh, exploration. Um, be very con cost conscious. And uh, by the way, uh, just uh, coming back to our merger and the integration, uh, I would like to once again stress that we did this merger just at the right time because we start to harvest now the synergies that are a natural consequence of the merger. Um, we have delivered in 2019 already more than 100 million euros in cash savings um, from the merger and we are perfectly on track to deliver the more than 200 million in cash savings um, from 2022 onwards. So Mario, thank you for your interesting explanation. Here's another question, a bit different topic. It's about political risks. Um, Artur Topokov from Vidomosti, Russia wants to know, the company is present in many countries. What are the most problematic locations in terms of tax regime, political risks, and do you see Russia as a low risk or a high risk country? Well, um, I don't think it is appropriate to have here um, a league table of which countries are critical and which countries are not critical. Um, we are in the oil and gas business um, that makes us always exposed to uh, uh, political risks, be it severe issues like we see them in Libya with the civil war or see it, uh, be it the public debate um, around energy transition and the need for, for gas and oil. So I think we feel comfortable in all uh, jurisdictions we are active in um, and we feel very comfortable in Russia where we are active for more than 30 years now and have always experienced a very good partnership and very stable framework conditions. Here's another question to a similar topic. Um, Gazprom and Nord Stream 2, do you feel comfortable about your exposure, Mario? As I just said, Winter Saldea feels very comfortable having Gazprom as a partner for more than 30 years. Um, it's a partnership that is uh, guaranteeing uh, safe and secure supplies of gas, uh, of cheap and affordable gas from Russia to Europe. I think this is a real advantage for the European industries. So yes, we feel very comfortable with that um, cooperation and partnership. We've got an additional question with regard to Nord Stream 2 from Stuart Elliott, S&P Global Plats. Um, does Winter Saldea expect the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline to be completed by the end of 2020? I would, I would um, uh, refer again to the project company. Um, we have no information about the planned timing of Nord Stream 2 other than what the Russian president has announced at the occasion of a meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel earlier this year, where he said that he expects uh, Nord Stream 2 to come on stream um, in the first or second quarter 2021. Yeah, thank you, Mario. Um, we have got two questions with regard to Libya. The Rheinfalz newspaper from Germany, Ilya Tüchter, would like to know when will the new joint venture with the Libyan Oil Corporation be operational? And Vera Eckert from Thomson Reuters would like to get an update on our Libyan oil output. Yeah, let me um, start with uh, the latter question. Uh, currently, we are not producing oil in our onshore activities in Libya. Um, the production had to be stopped because of a force majeure declaration of the respective export terminals. Um, they are blocked, as you might know. So uh, since we cannot export the crude, um, we cannot continue to produce. With regard to the um, setup of the new joint venture company, um, as you know, beginning of December, we have signed an EPSA contract with the Libyan uh, National Oil Company, and that contract foresees a transition period of six months in order to get the joint operating company up and running. Uh, so we are in the middle of the process of establishing this company and um, handing over the operations to the joint operating company. 
Um, last comment uh, refers then to the offshore activities, our participation in Aljurf. Um, this project uh, continues to produce smoothly as it is, did in the past. Yeah, um, we are shifting a bit uh, further north uh, to the Barents Sea. Anders Lieve Brenner from Energy Weekly Norway would like to know um, what we say about our drilling practice in, on the Norwegian continental shelf, especially with regard to the activities in the Barents Sea. Well, uh, Winters Aldea has interest in uh, fields and exploration licenses in uh, the uh, Barents uh, Sea. Um, these are all located in the um, southwestern Barents Sea and belong to the ice-free part of the Arctic Oceans. Um, so um, we continue to work there. We think we are absolutely capable of doing this. Um, in a responsible way and in a safe way. So we don't see any issues in continuing with our exploration activities in um, the Barents. Yeah, thank you very much, Mario. Um, we are still in Norway. Jutta Falkner from Business Portal Norway would like to know if we are going to plan concrete activities with regard to carbon capture storage CCS in Norway. Uh, CCS is a very interesting um, technology and it's uh, very close to our core business. Uh, so we are looking into this activity. Actually, Winters Aldea has um, a special uh, unit within uh, our organization to deal with carbon management um, and also with hydrogen. Um, there is, of course, one very uh, known uh, project in Norway, Northern Lights, um, uh, where we are in close contact to and exchanging experience. But we are also looking for CCS um, opportunities and possibilities in uh, our portfolio in the Netherlands. So it is an interesting field of activity, um, which we will uh, have as a focus area also in the future. Yeah, an additional question. Um, some international oil and gas companies have expanded their portfolio and invested in energy areas outside of oil and gas, especially in wind energy. Does Wintersal have plans for a time when there will be less demand for oil and gas, wants Jutta to know? First of all, um, we at Wintersal Dea are convinced that um, uh, oil and in particular gas will be needed for decades uh, to come. Um, uh, in the year 2040, um, analysts still expect um, that half of the world energy consumption has to be fulfilled by gas uh, and oil and that gas is growing significantly. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Winter Saldea is obviously looking into the future, so we are um, investigating, as I just mentioned, um, options of CCS, but also looking into hydrogen. Um, uh, we think that hydrogen might be a really interesting technology way forward also to decarbonize um, uh, natural gas. Um, that is uh, uh, the reason why we are cooperating with the Karlsruhe Institute of uh, Technology um, in order to investigate and um, do research on pyrolysis, um, uh, a new method um, that allows to separate methane and um, carbon. Um, we started this cooperation uh, this year and we are, we are very curious to see what the outcome will be. We expect very concrete results, but obviously research is something that demands patience. Uh, in terms of wind energy or other forms of renewable energies, um, uh, actually Winter Saldea invests in it. Um, if it is uh, linked to our upstream projects, we are a partner um, in uh, Norway to Equinor, uh, where Equinor is establishing um, an offshore wind farm in order to provide power to one of our installations. Um, we are investigating, for example, to use wind energy to power um, some of our Egyptian activities, but we are not becoming an investor in renewables per se. Yeah, we are still uh, around about the topic sustainability and natural gas. Uh, Torstein Indebrü from G21 Gas Magazine from Norway. Um, would like to know um, the EU shall become carbon neutral by 2050. What role will natural gas play in the EU after 2050? 
and does Wintersaal dare see any future for technologies as CCS and especially hydrogen produced from gas in Europe? Yeah, I think uh, I mentioned that already uh, before. So, um, yes, we see a role uh, for natural gas um, beyond uh, 2050, and uh, CCS will play an important role in that, as will uh, hydrogen. Um, so we will we will see both technologies uh, being applied in Europe. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced, and that's the reason why also Wintersal DEA is working in these two areas of uh, new technology. Um, from the North Sea, Jürgen Svelkux from Enachea would like to know what is your opinion on doing business in the Netherlands with the current fiscal climate and the nitrogen crisis? Well, um, as, I, as I said, um, uh, the um, business climate um, all around the world with these low prices is um, complicated, but uh, Winter Saldea is well positioned uh, for that. Um, uh, and I would uh, also say this holds true for the Netherlands. Um, we are continuing with our activities there. We are from our um, Dutch entity uh, also developing fields in uh, Denmark and in UK. We just started production from the silimanite field in the UK. So I would say the operations in the Netherlands um, are progressing well. Thank you very much, Mario. Now we are shifting a bit regional to North Africa and Middle East again. We've got a question from Abu Dhabi, from Shame Konchra, from Energy Intelligence. Um, he would like to know what is the status of the Gasha Sauer concession in Abu Dhabi and uh, are there milestones coming up? And um, also, did Wintersal bid for one or more blocks under Abu Dhabi's second licensing round? Well, uh, let me start with the with the Gasha project. Uh, the project is uh, running very smoothly. It's a great cooperation with our partner Adnok uh, and also with the other international oil companies that are involved in uh, the project. Um, uh, so that that progresses nicely. Uh, work has been started. Um, we are currently. Uh, progressing to develop the Dalma hub. Uh, at the same time, we are uh, preparing there the first artificial islands for the Gasha and Hail development. Um, we are preparing drilling of the first wells there. So everything is um, well on track. Um, and um, I think it's going to be a very, very successful project that is contributing to the resilience of our low cost um, ENP portfolio. Um, in terms of uh, bidding round, no, we did not participate in a new bidding round. Yeah, um, from Egypt, we have got a question from Mahmoud Morsi from Petroleum Today. The Egyptian petroleum industry witnesses a golden area with the current activities and discoveries. We want to know your vision about Egypt and the possibility to be the energy hub in the region. Uh, indeed, Egypt is um, currently um, seeing a very good uh, time for the oil and gas industry. Um, I think the government has taken very good um, decisions and measures in order to um, promote the sector. Um, uh, we invest and have invested in Egypt. You know about the, the West Nile Delta development, but also in our own operated activities. We have been able to increase production in Desuk. Um, we just signed a couple of weeks ago uh, a new concession, uh, East Damanur, uh, where we are going to explore in the next uh, three years. So it, it is really an interesting and exciting um, country for the oil and gas industry. Um, when it comes to the um, Eastern Mediterranean Energy Hub, I think this is also a very good um, initiative taken um, by the Egyptian government. Um, I think Egypt is perfectly positioned um, with its infrastructure, with its resources, in order to be part of uh, a larger scale uh, energy hub in the Eastern Mediterranean, including Israel, including Cyprus. So it's very exciting from an um, energy uh, perspective, but I think also from a political perspective, um, this cooperation amongst uh, a number of uh, Northern African and European countries is quite exciting. Thank you very much, Mario. We have uh, two detailed questions from uh, Norway and Argentina. 
uh, from Stavanger Aftenblatt. Uh, the question from the colleagues, they want to know, uh, you mentioned exploration cuts, you know, our budget is, is, is reduced. Um, how will this affect your exploration plans in Norway? And from Argentina, uh, the colleagues want to know what decisions should be taken by the Argentina government to assure the continuity on the company plans for Bandurria Norte and Alguada Federal. Yeah, when it comes to uh, Norway exploration, um, of course, I mean, if we reduce exploration budget on a global scale, Norway is an important part of our exploration activities. Uh, we'll also tr uh, try to reduce our expenditures in the entire um, uh, Norwegian portfolio. So we will see a decline um, there um, uh, as we will see in the uh, rest of the portfolio. Um, when it comes to Argentina, Tina, um, it's not my role to give um, advice to the Argentine um, uh, government what to do. Obviously, what always helps um, is to expose the com companies that want to invest uh, to a, a stable legal framework, to a stable investment framework, um, and ideally to market prices. Um, this is what companies can deal with. Um, so when, whenever we see um, governments uh, trying to regulate uh, prices to interfere into market developments, we are getting confirmed, uh, concerned, um, as we do uh, when we see uh, quickly changing legal frameworks or tax frameworks for our investments. So what we, what we need is stability. Yeah, Peter Ramsey from Pretorium Economist. Mario would like to know if you can say anything about mergers and acquisitions, either acquisition opportunities. Um, I think the, the first months after the merger, what we have been focusing uh, on, and you have seen that, is streamlining our portfolio. Uh, we have done a number of farm downs or divestments. Uh, in Argentina, we have uh, reduced our participation in Aguada Federal and Banduria Norte uh, brought uh, Conoco Phillips, uh, an experienced uh, also shale oil, shale gas company, into our activities. Uh, we have sold our participation in infrastructure in Norway, like uh, Polarlet uh, Nihamna. Um, we have been reducing smaller activities in Germany. So that has been the focus. And now we will see if this crisis um, will uh, provide any opportunities forward looking in terms of M&A. Um, but um, there are no specific or concrete plans as we speak and, and for sure no announcement to be made today. Yeah, and uh, two questions from Germany. Uh, the HNR newspaper from Kassel, Greg Rudorba, wants to know how many of the planned jobs cut after our merger, merger in Germany are completed. And uh, Sören Pico from Shipping Watch would like to know if, um, with uh, regard to the current situation, we have to send people home or lay off people. Yeah, with regard to the um, uh, reduction of uh, personnel that we have in um, uh, Germany and on a global scale, as you might remember, we announced to reduce roughly 1,000 positions, um, mainly in Germany and in Norway. Um, we also said to do this um, in um, a socially responsible manner. Uh, we came in October to very good uh, agreements with the employee representatives. Um, so we are doing it in a very responsible way. Um, and I would say we are roughly half through uh, with, that, with that exercise. Um, so this is um, progressing very, very smoothly and, 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 and very positively. Um, in terms of impacts of the crisis, um, I mean, we, we just went through our merger exercise and are uh, creating a new Winter Saldea, which is an extremely lean and cost-effective um, company. So for the time being, I don't see uh, a need for layoffs that go beyond of what we have been announcing um, at the time of the merger. Thank you very much, Mario. And uh, Surin Pico has an additional question. He would like to know, um, is Wintersaldea profitable in this current price environment? I mean, you have um, seen our financial figures from, from last year. For this year, as I mentioned before, 
um, we would uh, need um, uh, an oil price between 35 and 40 US dollars on average um, at a gas price of um, four dollars per MCF in order to um, have a positive free cash flow, uh, which means in, in order to uh, be able to fully um, uh, fund our development capex and exploration budget out of this uh, free cash flow. Um, so um, I think that is a good uh, sign of how resilient the portfolio is next year. Um, these uh, values will be even lower, significantly lower, um, because of the number of projects that are coming on stream. Um, and at the same time, we are, we are running off the um, CarPex plateau we have seen the last two years. Thank you very much, Mario. Um, now we are going to shift to our last topic, IPO. We have two, three questions with regard to the IPO. Irina Kesik from Öl und Gas Vertical from Russia wants to know, until when? Is the IPO postponed? How high would the oil price need to be in order for you to take a decision to go ahead with the IPO? Well, with, the, with regards to the IPO, from a company perspective, from Winter Saldea perspective, nothing has changed. Uh, we said we will be IPO ready uh, by the mid of 2020 and the company is going to be IPO ready. Um, as I said it before, um, it's, it's no secret that our shareholders want to take us uh, public, um, but um, it's also no secret uh, that you need the right market conditions and the shareholders will uh, then give the start signal for the IPO and they will decide what the right timing for the IPO is. Winter Saldea will be ready. And a question from um, Neren, from Mrs. Nering Essing from DPR Germany. She would like to know if you're going to calculate additional costs with regard to the merger for this year. Well, I think if you look into our financial statements, we have uh, provisioned um, the, the cost for the merger uh, already in our financials um, of, of 2019. Uh, obviously, the cash out will be uh, throughout this year and also next year, um, in particular in relation uh, with the staff leaving the company. Um, but we don't foresee um, additional costs beyond what has been communicated and, and what you um, have seen in our financial statements. Yeah, I think we need to wrap up, Mario. Thank you very much. Uh, he has one last question from our side, not pre-prepared. What is your wish for 2020? Well, I think I, I have um, uh, said it um, before. Um, I, I really hope and wish um, that um, the international community will act in these uh, difficult times with uh, strengths of character, um, braving this uh, crisis, that we show solidarity, um, that we um, really look back um, in a year's time at 2020, um, as I said it before, as a year of crisis, but not um, as a year of misfortune. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your questions and I thank you, Mario, for your answers. These are turbulent times for our industry due to the corona crisis and much more beyond that. Our industry um, fundamentally is in a state of flux and Winter Saldea as a company is in a state of flux. It was unusual to communicate this way via video message and audio call. I will be quite frank with you. That's not something we want to get used to. We sincerely hope that in future we will be able to meet and talk to each other again in person. We would like, therefore, to thank you and uh, all the more for your flexibility and for your appreciating that we had to cancel press trips at such short notice this year and instead conduct our discussions in this form. A recording of uh, Mario's statement and the Q&A session will be available on our website from this afternoon. There you will also find our annual report and our sustainability report, both of which were published today. And if you have additional questions or some questions are still unanswered, please write us an email as usual at press, press at and we and our press team will answer your questions. And lastly, but mostly, most importantly, We hope that you, your families and colleagues stay healthy. Thank you very much from our side and farewell. 
Thank you. Thanks for your interest in Winter Saldea. Um, stay healthy, as Michael said, and if possible, stay at home. Thank you very much.